Thank you, Greg. <laughs> so I want to start by asking you to connect to your imagination. Imagine you're in a dark, stormy, rainy, cold night, kind of like tonight outside, <laughs> but you're not in safe and clean and uh, beautiful Zurich. You're out in the uh, very unfamiliar and eerie and threatening countryside. And you're there for a work event, and you're trying to get ready for a conference the next day, but you haven't quite made it into town, and you have to stay the night in this really creepy looking hotel. So you get in, you uh, find a room, you obviously rub the hotel owner the wrong way, but you manage to get yourself to sleep. And you're, you feel like you, you, you just, your, your head has just hit the pillow when all of a sudden you're woken up by some loud sirens, some loud noises, some shuffling, some screaming, some yelling. Police are streaming in through the hotel and you're, they're grabbing you, they're pulling you into the, uh, a police car and you've gradually put together through this mayhem that you have now been accused of murder of the owner of this hotel. Somehow, she has died in the night and as you're in your prison cell, uh, pondering your predicament, you learn that she is very well connected to this this very, uh, very uh, isolated community that is very distrustful of outsiders. And so you were the only outsider in the town at that night, so you have to be guilty. And so if you were about to have a trial by jury, a jury of your peers, you'd be in trouble, right? They're all quite prejudiced, prejudiced against you in this town. But you breathe a sigh of relief because at least you can get a judge to a, a, a neutral arbiter of the law to rule on your case instead. But then your hopes are dashed when you learn that the judge is actually the cousin of the hotel owner. And from what you can gather from news reports, this judge will not give you a fair trial. So you're about to ponder your life in prison. You're going to be locked up forever. But then you learn about this interesting experimental technology that has now been adopted by this town. Rather than have a human judge, you could have a robot judge, a judge that actually is a computer that takes all of the evidence that the police can produce about your case and compares it to what other judges have done in not just this town, not just this isolated town, but all of Switzerland, and hopefully generate a fair decision based on what else has been decided. And so even though the idea of a robot judge sounds somewhat scary at first, at least in this case, I would ask you, would you choose a judge, a jury, or execute file? So just to you know, bring this idea of um, kind of an unfair judicial system uh, to, the, to the broader, broader case, uh, my, my research and my expertise is in the US system, so um, I, I'll talk about US asylum courts, for example. So you can see that in San Francisco, for example, your chances of being denied asylum are over 80%, whereas if you showed up for asylum in Phoenix, it's about 50-50. So basically, depending on what court you show up to for asylum, you have radically different uh, chances of getting asylum. And in fact, in San Francisco, uh, th these are just from f uh, figures for the last few years, there's actually a judge that if you're randomly assigned to them, uh, you're, you have a 90% chance of getting asylum. So basically, you're, you know, it's, it's, an, it's assured. But there's another judge that you only have a 3% chance of getting asylum. And this is really just you know, the luck of the draw. You, you, know, you flip a coin when you get to the court and you, 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 get, you get the wrong judge. So uh, another example of this type of problems with, with the current human ju judge decision making in the legal system um, is th th these, are, these are figures from, from uh, Israel parole boards. Uh, basically, you can see that after breakfast, uh, th th this is the first dot on the top right, then you're very likely to get released from jail. But this uh, starts falling precipitously, and if you're the person right before lunch, the lunch break, you're going to be kept in jail. <laughs> uh, right after lunch, they, they, they become friendly again, and you're going to get let out. It then falls as you get hungry and tired, and then after the afternoon snack, it goes up a little bit more. So uh, again, I, 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 and, uh, one, more, one more example of this. Uh, this is uh, somewhat more serious, uh, that uh, in the United States, at least, um, 
you know, uh, Caucasian individuals have a, have a um, one in 17 chance of being in prison in their lifetime, uh, and um, uh, black men are, have a one in three chance. And this is the product of a long, uh, a long array of uh, discriminatory practices, starting with whether you get stopped, uh, whether you get charged by the prosecutor, uh, whether you're uh, found guilty by the jury, and whether you get sent to prison by the judge. Um, and so I ask you again, more generally, do we want judges, do we want juries, or do we want execute files? So this actually isn't as fanciful as it sounds in the sense that um, there's a lot of news articles coming out uh, all the time about legal services in the private sector and in legal decision making by judges uh, being, being automated. But just to give you an idea of how this works, uh, let's just think about what, a, what does a judge do? What does a robot judge do? They take evidence and they make decisions. And so evidence is really you know, data, it's just uh, some affidavits, uh, some videos, some pictures, some sounds, Anything that you can imagine a computer being able to read and process, which is this, this set of objects that computers can read and process, is expanding all the time. Uh, you, could, you hear about facial recognition software, for example, even in, in um, complex videos. And then take that data or that evidence and make a decision. And so this could be guilty or innocent. Uh, this could be a liable or not liable. Um, this could be how many years should someone go to jail. So you can imagine, at least in the abstract, a computer doing this. Um, so this is achieved through uh, algorithms or machine learning technology. Um, one advantage of what a robot judge can do compared to a human judge is that it can take the data and all of the, the previous information from all previous cases. So basically you can imagine that uh, the law consists of many judge decisions, you know, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of decisions. The robot judge actually has uh, the possibility, the, the technological capacity to read all of those decisions. And then looking based on what previous judges have done, we ask the question, can the computer replicate what previous judges have done given that evidence? And you can evaluate performance in a, in a held out uh, sample. And so I would ask you, you know, once we can have a computer that replicates what a judge, a human judge does, is that a robot judge? Maybe it is. So I would say that you know, for my own research, in the case of prosecutor decisions um, in, a, in a quite detailed data set, we can replicate what a prosecutor does 88% of the time. Um, so you can think of this as, well, there's a 12% error rate, or maybe the prosecutors make errors themselves, or they differ. And actually, some evidence consistent with that is that, for example, in a recent sample of US, judges, if there was an appeal, they were affirmed only 85% of the time. So the higher court judges thought they were wrong 15% of the time. And something that you might want to imagine it's more close to home is thinking about doctors. So when it comes to human doctors diagnosing serious diseases that result in death, they were wrong 20% of the time. So they were only right 80% of the time in this case. And so maybe this 88% of replicating uh, human judges in the courtroom is not so bad for a robot judge. So not you know we don't want we don't just want the robot judge to replicate what a judge what a human judge does though. Um, instead, we might have think about a robot clerk coming into the courtroom and helping human judges make decisions. You can imagine an app where the robot the the, the human judge along the way before having a robot judge controlling everything just going to his phone and say. Siri, guilty or innocent. And this would provide some predictions and some statistics about previous judges uh, and uh, provide some information for what the judge should do now. Um, and just to, to a note about um, kind of the previous biases and prejudices in the judicial system that we saw uh, previously. The idea is that um, algorithms can correct the biases of these individual judges. So you can imagine in this particular city, out in the, uh, the countryside in Switzerland that are very prejudiced against outsiders that don't live there, the robot judge wouldn't have that same prejudice and you would actually get uh, the average decision of the same defendant in the same, same evidence. On the other hand, there is still the problem of systematic bias. So we saw that in the case of the, the way that the US criminal justice system treats racial minorities. Um, 
a, a, the algorithms as currently specified in terms of trying to replicate what the judges do, uh, they actually could replicate that bias. Um, they could even uh, amplify them. So this is a serious risk for uh, pr potentially this new world of, of robot judges. On the other hand, um, the other thing that these algorithms can accomplish is allow us to detect these biases. So they provide systematic tools for understanding human decision making and where it deviates from the norm. Thereby, by detecting bias, we can understand it and therefore to help reduce it. So I ask you, have we reached this, um, this new world of robot justice, given my description so far? So let's just talk about what human judges do. They have a concept of justice. They can apply this to new types of cases in response to uh, new, new norms, new laws coming about. Society is developing. Robot judges, by definition, can't do that. At least as currently specified, they can't uh, c consider new laws coming in. They just have to replicate what human judges have done. Something that is closer to a robot, just, robot um, judge or something more closer to legal artificial intelligence, that's quite unproven technology, and I think we're quite far, far away from that. Instead, the role for robot judges that I see is to help human judges detect their own biases, detect their own prejudices, and move towards the concept of justice that only humans can understand. And so I ask you to think about human judges and robot judges connecting for better decisions. Thank you.